Welcome to the Intuitive Eating Mama podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer D'Amato. I am an intuitive eating counselor and I'm also a mom to four. This podcast is not just for mamas, it's for all women who are ready to ditch diets, ditch the scale and food guilt forever, and instead invite peace with food, increase their body trust and confidence in all of her choices. I believe this show is going to shed some light on sneaky ways diet culture has infiltrated your thoughts, your family, and your well-being. No matter the episode, I want you to walk away feeling informed, inspired, and encouraged. So whether you're taking a walk, washing the dishes, or carting kids around, let's dive into the latest episode on the Intuitive Eating Mama podcast. Well, hey ladies, I am excited to bring you this really great interview I had with Jeff Ash. Yes, I know on the Intuitive Eating Mama podcast, having a male is not very common, but I thought this was so important because you might have men in your life, whether it's a spouse, sons, fathers, whoever it is. And I think this is such a valuable discussion to bring in because we're talking with them. We're in a relationship with them. We're trying to understand them. I know I am. So I invited Jeff on. He is a husband, father of two adult daughters. He is a dog lover. I mean, yes, please. A nutritionist, an intuitive eating coach, a personal trainer, and he has his own podcast, which is the Men's Intuition Podcast. This interview was so great. He gives wonderful insight into the male perspective when it comes to intuitive eating and body image. Let's dive into that interview right now. Welcome, Jeff. I'm so excited to have you here on the Intuitive Eating Mama podcast today. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I was really excited uh, when you asked me to come on and have this conversation. Yeah. I mean, this really is like the official first male guest. I, I mean, I, my husband's listening to this right now. I know he is. And yes, sweetie, you were definitely the official first first. But when we're talking about intuitive eating, Jeff, you like top that list right here. Would you take a moment and just introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you and what it is that you do. Yeah, sure. So um, I am an intuitive eating coach and also a personal trainer and nutritionist. So I have a, a little bit of a broad background there. And uh, I run the intuitive.eating.men Instagram account. And that's where I really focus my attention on bringing the intuitive eating approach and principles and message to to men. I mean, I do have plenty of women that follow me also, but my my goal with that was really to, to open this up and expand it out and, and intentionally reach out to men with this uh, this intuitive eating message and principles, because it's just as much for us as it is for, for women. It's for everybody. And so yeah. I think that it's important that we we do that since so much of the, the conversations seem to be had by women, expressed by women, and even directed toward women. Because I, you know, as you pointed out, you know, on your podcast, I'm the first guy that's been on to talk about it. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of the other women and you, who I've, I'm, they're the ones I've learned all of this from. So I, I love all the women that are doing it. But you know, a lot of them are all hey ladies, hey hey girls, you know, this kind of language. And so, you know, I, and I'm, you're telling I'm me, cool Jeff, that. that doesn't speak to men. You're telling me, <laughs> Hey ladies, <laughs> well, Hey mamas. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I think for the most part, a lot of the guys, it doesn't really resonate with them. I'm a little different in that, you know, I, I kind of filter through that myself perfectly fine, but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what, what I do. And I'm a husband and, and father of a couple of adult daughters and I have a couple of dogs and hopefully you won't hear them make their appearance. But. <laughs> Mine either. I mean, I've got the daughters and the dogs and hopefully everybody just gets it together quietly while yeah. we chat about this. And I have to say, I mean, that's how we met on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Like I had come across your account and the reason I am one of your followers is because I actually believe I need understanding. I need that male perspective because yes, I can have conversations with my husband and struggles maybe he's had and messages he heard growing up, but I want to expand that. There's a, just very few males, men that are really talking about this, Jeff. So I, first of all, I'm like, yes. And I recommend you to anyone who's like, Hey, does anyone know of a guy talking about intuitive eating? I'm like, Jeff does because it's so real. And you've already kind of alluded to it. 
there's a different way. Your messaging is very different than mine. I mean, not just like, okay, we have different personalities, but can you share a little bit about that? Like how you share that message that's so different when you're talking to men than when I'm talking to women? Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to, to put it into words exactly, but the, the men, while we struggle with the same things with, uh, disordered eating habits and, and issues with diet culture and diet mentality, I think it impacts us in a different way and it shows itself in a different way. So, you know, I, I had, uh, Charlotte Markey on my podcast, uh, which by the way, I have a, a podcast called men's intuition where it's aimed at men too. And I had her on recently and we were talking about body image in boys and men and some of the, the differences in, in the way that body image impacts people is a big area, I think. And so with men, you know, you, if you were to ask men, Hey, have you tried to diet to lose weight, uh, over the last year? And a lot of men would say, no. And so early on in the body image research, it was assumed that men didn't struggle with body image like women do when in, in reality, they were asking the wrong question Ooh. because a lot of men, they aren't struggling with necessarily trying to lose weight. Some are, but that if you were asking them, oh, are you trying to lose weight? Some guys would be like, well, no, I'm trying to build muscle and, and yes. get leaner. And so the language is different. Uh -huh. The goals are different in a lot of cases. And so sometimes we have this uh, we it's kind of a misperception that men don't struggle with those things. Also, we don't have the same kinds of, uh, standards put on us that women do, mm. you know, I mean, you, I, I, I notice this all the time. Cause I watch a, a lot of sports talk on, on TV and you see every woman on, on one on ESPN or Fox sports or any of that, they are all traditionally attractive and thin and, but yet you have a pretty diverse group of men. Some of the guys are bigger, significantly bigger, not just because they were former NFL players, but because they are carrying a lot of body fat, you know, they're in a the bigger suit that makes them look bigger, but you would never see a woman who was bigger in those contexts. And oh so <laughs> while we still get the pressure from the men's fitness magazines, men's health, you know, for the shredded abs, the V torso, you know, all of that kind of thing, it's still different because we don't have the same kinds of stigma and the same kinds of, of influences that culture uh, puts on women and that, that pressure. Mm. So it's, it's different in that way. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And I was like, while you were talking in my head, I was doing that thing. Like I was going to see if I was right, because as soon as you said, it wasn't about, you know, weight loss necessarily mm -hmm. those body image issues in my head, I was like, I wonder if it's muscle. And first of all, I'm just going to be like, good. I'm glad that I know that part, but I love also what you're bringing up just as far as the beauty standards, right? These ideals, these things that are put on women that aren't, that are put differently. And maybe it mm -hmm. is the muscles, right? It is the Toned. It is the abs, right? You should have the six packs and all of that. And maybe you can answer to this. If you've seen this, is it about the capabilities, like what your body can do for men, like what they can attain, what they can, how they can perform. Is that something that kind of feeds into that as well? Yeah, it definitely can. And so, you know, I, I came to intuitive eating from kind of a typical fitness, fat loss focused muscle building focused background. And so that's kind of where I got my start. And a lot of the people I interact with talk in, in that, in those kinds of terms and that terminology. And so when I came over to intuitive eating a few years ago, the way that I talk to people still is assuming that they're coming from that perspective. And so I approach it from the perspective of understanding what their goals are. And in a lot of cases, the guys are not super concerned with getting smaller. A lot of them are, well, I want to get bigger, but yet I want to get leaner too. So there, a lot of guys are okay with having some, some fat on the belly, as long as they overall, they look big and muscular, muscular. you know, that kind of thing. Mm. And so of course that, that varies from, you know, from man to man, you know, I do, I do ninja obstacle course. Uh, yes. That's I would say that's one reason to follow Jeff alone is watching him. <laughs> I think the last thing I saw, um, before we were recording this is you were going like on a staircase underneath it mm -hmm. and climbing and Jeff, it's just, to me, I'm utterly fascinated. There's no way I'm ever doing anything like that. So I'm going to watch you and be like, dude, that's so cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I love well, your ninja training. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I call that my joyful movement. And, oh, yeah. Uh, but, but in, you know, for me, I'm not trying to get big and muscular because it actually impacts that, that kind of performance. So there is a broad range depending on what guys are involved in, but a lot of it is based on what you are interested in and what you want to do. And a lot of, a lot of the guys that that's where they focus their attention. So you guys, so you have the guys that like powerlifting and stuff, and they really don't care too much about the body fat on them, but they care about how much muscle they're building more yeah. and that kind of thing. So, so it does differ. Those are some of the areas that I see um, as big differences. Again, that's kind of, we're sort of stereotyping to a degree, right. but and, there right. is you a have to make, I was like, you have to make yeah. generalizations in some respect because right. it, it, you know, every individual, which is why we like working individually with mm -hmm. people, because everyone has their own story. Everyone has that story of how they came to the struggles that they're in. Everyone has their own story of how like you, you know, came to intuitive eating and, and how that kind of plays out in real life. But mm -hmm. I think in general, even to acknowledge there are body image issues for everyone, like male, female, like they're having body image issues. Now I'm curious on, on another side of that, we're just starting to hear more talk about men, even when they were boys, young, struggling with eating disorders that have gone undiagnosed for years, that they have had really disordered eating, even if it wasn't a formal um, eating disorder that finally was diagnosed, but really a lot of that being put, you know, put under the rug that males don't struggle with food like females do. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit like what you're hearing, what you're seeing and, and what you know in that kind of area when we're talking about intuitive eating as it relates really to food? Yeah, well, I think that's a big assumption. And I think that's one reason why a lot of guys don't talk about it is because when they do struggle with that, they don't necessarily realize that that is super common. Yeah. And so um, it's interesting that you say that because every, you know, I- over the last couple of years, I've really emphasized and focused my attention on working with men. And so all my clients right now are men uh, or or couples, and we're kind of working with the kids and, and that kind of thing together. But um, it's really interesting because we're dealing with the same thing that women's on, the women are when it comes to relationship with food, the emotional mm -hmm. eating, the struggles with it, mm -hmm. the challenges, the frustrations, where it all came from. It's all yeah. the same stuff. Yeah. And, and so- that's one of the interesting things that when I really started focusing on working with men, because prior to that, I, I kind of focused on whoever was, was coming to me, which was women. I mean, women are the ones that tend to seek out the help with their relationship with food. They're, when I was doing weight loss stuff, you know, they were like, they were the ones trying to look for weight loss and all of that kind of thing. So I did work with a lot of women, but then when I intentionally shifted my focus to men, they're, the, they're having the same same struggles we have and they cry on our calls too and they open up about the same kinds of things that are going on that that women do and i think that's one of the the really interesting things about all of this and i think it's one of the things that what's well, one of the reasons why i try and be super vulnerable with with my content and also in my conversations with my clients and let them know kind of where i've struggled myself where i've come from what's going on in my life. Um, you know, if you've been following my content for a while, you saw, I mean, I'm sharing stuff about my prostate surgery, mm -hmm. my sleep apnea. Yes. Um, and, and for those who are listening, <laughs> I'm in a, I'm in a, um, a, a, a slim body and I have sleep apnea. I have cholesterol issues and I had prostate issues and, you know, my shoulder surgery. So I like to share those things. And a lot of guys have really appreciated that because I think it's important that we talk about those those kinds of things. And it can help men to realize that, okay, these whole back to your eating disorder question, I never really even hit that, but you are actually hitting it part. in so many good ways, yeah. Jeff. I just want to tell you, because again, you're, you are actually normalizing it like in your content, right. In this crazy mm -hmm. Instagram world that I have a love hate relationship with, you really are normalizing it. And actually one of the things you shared, um, about actually the sleep apnea, blew a lot of my clients away who I, you know, have shared your stuff and talked about. Oh, yeah. And if they started following you, they're like, wait a minute, he's in a smaller sized body. How is this possible? Because all I hear is my larger body is the reason the only people in large bodies have sleep apnea. And of course it was 
that vulnerability, that normalization of these conversations is what is really needed. Mm -hmm. And again, I only work with women, mostly moms. I have a lot of moms who have sons and Mm -hmm. they are feeling that impact that their dieting has had on their sons. And they want to, you know, they want to stop that. They don't want that to be the narrative. They don't want to be because they're actually hearing more that this is having an impact. You don't need to have a daughter for this to have an impact on their relationship with food, on their relationship with their body. And Mm -hmm. again, you bringing it to light and being just vulnerable and honest and having these conversations, you know, that's what it's doing. It, this is what we need more of to normalize these struggles are everyone's struggles. I just think it's been what I say to my clients all the time. I think it's just so underreported that now is why we're hearing about it. It's not like a new thing that no. men are being diagnosed with eating disorders or that they have really highly disordered eating. It's just finally being talked about. It's taken way longer than it mm-hmm. ever should have, but it is people like you, Jeff, that are making this part of the normal conversation and validating how they're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, important. that's exactly right. And you know, it, in some of the ways it shows up in men that's, that are different than, than women, you know, again, generalizing things is like strict or rigid gym training programs and schedules, you know, that can be uh, a a sign that there's something going on. Of course, for other people like myself, I have, I, I take my training seriously because I, the, the more I train, the more fun I can have on the ninja stuff. So like, Uh I couldn't have done that the up the stairs like that. If I didn't do a little extra training and some of the other things that I'm trying to do to hopefully not kill myself um, <laughs> to break anything bad. <laughs> I just watch it to, and hold my breath. Like don't fall. Yeah. Like what happens? Like don't fall. Cause I know you did have like a shoulder surgery or something a while back, or, you know, yeah. like having these things that happen. Yeah. I was like, don't fall, don't fall. You're okay. But I think you're bringing up something else that's important for everyone to hear, which is we can move our body. We can do amazing mm-hmm. things for our overall health and well being, exercise, all of that, that doesn't have any focus on our weight or the size of our body, or even what this body we're in is capable of doing. Like, I really think that's another whole aspect that you bring again to the table. Um, Movement can be fun. You literally, I mean, I know that the podcast won't see how much you're lighting up when you talk about (laughs) this ninja training, but I mean, you really do because it's something you found that you, you really enjoy. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, that makes such a big difference when you find something that you actually enjoy. And then uh, knowing that it's also beneficial for your body and, mm. and that kind of thing. And, and it doesn't have to be ninja. It doesn't have to be something intense. It can be, there's so many different things. And also one of the things that a lot of people don't, don't uh, often fail to do is we, we think that, oh, well, ninja, rock climbing, this or that, or those are just for thinner people. Mm. But what I've enjoyed seeing on Instagram, and I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, different diversity in that area. Ninja is very, would be difficult in a, you know, depending on body size, but we have a quite a diverse group of people. We have women in their sixties in my class. We have guys that are bigger than me. And, you know, you do one of the fun things with something like that is that you do what you can do. And so mm-hmm. you challenge yourself. You're not challenged against the other people. You're, you're challenging yourself. Uh, things like climbing though, is a really interesting one. There's a number of they're just to put it bluntly, they're fat climbers and they're climbing, they're showing on Instagram and they're not doing the same things that some of the little tiny people are doing that might involve, uh, you know, that wouldn't work very well unless you're just super, super tiny, not even my size, but, uh, but they're climbing and they're enjoying it and they're finding climbing routes and things like that, that suit their ability level. And they're able to enjoy these activities that were typically associated with only, you know, thinner people. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that, uh, yeah, finding different things and, and being open to the possibility that, that you don't have to be smaller to engage in some of these activities. A lot of, a lot of my training revolves around, you know, like I'm not trying to lose weight, even though it would be nice if I was smaller, but I'm not. And so I focus on getting stronger and by getting stronger, then I'm able to do the ninja obstacles. And so, you know, all kinds of different ways to approach that, that movement that way. Yeah. And I think what can be really fun is the exploring phase. 
You know, when Mm -hmm. you let go of any expectations, I love when my clients start trying new things, whether they land there or not. I had one client, she was doing parkour and I'm Mm -hmm. like, um, this is freaking awesome. You know me, I'm, I'm such an office fan that of course I'm just picturing that opening scene with Michael Scott and just running around yelling parkour, but she's like, (laughs) no. Uh, (laughs) but for her, it's something she loves. Like she really enjoys it. I mean, I have clients who love spinning like that. Mm -hmm. They've end up finding the thing. And if we can be open to that exploring that it doesn't have to look a certain way, but that all movement counts, but all movement has benefits as well. You know, I follow a lot of um, those that identify as fat, those that identify as, you know, larger body and whatever word that they are comfortable with that run. And they Mm -hmm. are breaking this stigma that you have to be in a smaller size body to run that, oh, you're going to hurt your knees. You're going to ruin this. And they're like, um, no, you can run. Mm -hmm. And as much as I don't really want to run, I have run, I've done the things, check the bucket list, all of that. But I am so inspired of who they're encouraging and what they're showing to the world. Like you don't have to have these, this box, these limitations put on you with your body. You might have to modify, right? adjust, Mm -hmm. find ways to make it work for you. Or you end up going, you know what? This isn't bringing me as much joy as I would like it to. So I'm going to go explore something else. Like all of these Mm -hmm. things are good. Um, I love this so, so much. And I do love watching the crazy ninja moves that you're doing out there. (laughs) That's again, something I'm not going to do. So I just live vicariously through other people. (laughs) Um, So one of the things that my clients definitely struggle with, not all of them, but I'd say a large majority is they've walked into this intuitive eating journey. And some of them come to that from a place of, you know, years of chronic dieting. I'd say almost all of them, they don't necessarily know intuitive eating, but they're just done. They just want to have less food guilt, feel free, you know, and really feel comfortable and confident in their body. So they walk into this work and they're excited about it. I mean, they're nervous, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're kind of hesitant, but they're like, I know I need something. So they walk into this work. And one of the first things that comes up is my husband is like, what are you doing? We should be on a diet together. He's dieting. She's not. And then they feel this conflict. Mm -hmm. I'm curious on your perspective on, because again, I'm talking to the women, you talk to the males on how you would even share about that journey with a spouse, with your male spouse, um, when they're not necessarily gung ho, or they actually even are still dieting, like immersed in diet culture, what would be maybe your best advice or direction with that conversation? Yeah. And that's a, that's a really good question. And it's one that comes up a lot. And it's, it's interesting because, um, one of the things that I see a lot in the anti-diet, non-diet space from a lot of uh, practitioners. And I think it carries over then into their clients is this, this sort of bold defiance against diet culture, which makes sense. It's understandable that, that it's been so damaging to you for Mm -hmm. so long, but they, it's often presented as if you don't agree with this, you are you're fat phobic. You, you want to eradicate fat people. You don't know the science. You don't understand. You're blinded to it. You're just part of diet culture. It, it's, it's almost a very aggressive tone. Mm-hmm. And you've probably seen that too. Mm-hmm. Um, it can almost be a, um, somewhat of a almost egotistical tone, kind of like, oh, well, I've, I've discovered the truth and you don't know it. And, and if you're different than, you know, if you disagree with any of the the, the things that the main people that are talking about it are saying, then, then, you know, there's something wrong with what you, with your thinking and that kind of thing. Mm. And so I think that the way to do it is, is to hold back a little bit, you know, it's really easy when we learn something new and we're so excited about it, but to look for strategic ways to, to uh, open up the door, because remember, you probably didn't come to it overnight yourself. It probably has been a long process for you too. Mm -hmm. And now it's probably going to be a process for your, for your uh, male partner, spouse also. And so I like to, to focus on the low hanging fruit areas. And so sometimes sharing, Hey, um, you know, if you're, if you're talking about some of the principles, you know, one of them that makes so much sense is hunger and fullness. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. you can share how, you know, 
hey, there's 10 principles, but there's really there's two that are really cool. And I think these would make sense to you too. You you can have this conversation. You know, one of them is honoring your hunger. And so if you know, understanding that your body needs fuel to function properly, but then at the other other side, it's very balanced. And it says we don't just honor our hunger, but we also learn to recognize our fullness. And and that would even make sense to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um you know, some people deny that, you know, they're like, nope, you got to track everything. And it doesn't matter what your hunger and fullness says. That's all you know, that that isn't going to keep you in line. But at the same time, I think most of us, when we're reasonable, when we're having a conversation, you know, those two things are very practical, I think. And I think a lot of guys resonate with those kinds of practical things. Mm. You know, we like those things to do, mm-hmm. you know, tell me what to do kind of thing. And, and, uh, and so that's where I think is one area that that we can focus a lot on. It's finding low hanging fruit, and then also understanding your your spouse and, and what resonates with them. If there's mm-hmm. somebody who wants the uh, the proof, you know, I had had a boss one time. He always used to say, "Snow me, don't show me." <laughs> I, I mean, sorry, show, show me, me, don't, don't snow, snow me. me. I got yeah, that I got backwards. it. <laughs> um, and and so. I think that that's the case too, is it's like, you know, if you start coming up with these wild ideas and everything that they've read or heard scientific, you know, kind of in quotes, then if it's different than that, then it may be that showing them some of those studies might be helpful, but other guys Mm -hmm. that may not. But I I do think that, and and picking some that are not so much arguing on the nuances. So arguing the nuances of low carb versus keto versus high protein and low fat and Mediterranean, you know, like those kinds of things where you can just get off in the weeds, but some of the research showing just how a positive change in body image as a result of intuitive eating. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys, I know myself, you know, if, if my wife came to me and said that she had, it was working on an approach that was going to help her feel better about her body and feel more comfortable in her own skin, that that would be something I think a lot of guys would resonate with. Cause I agree. You know, um, I agree. You know, a lot of us, we don't, we don't really care what size our wife is. We want them to, to feel good in their body because we love them. Yes. And so, oh, um, that's and so even good, if you're yeah. concerned with, you know, even if you're concerned with the whole health implication stuff and all of that, it's still, we want them to feel comfortable and confident in their body. So kind of coming at it from that approach, rather than attacking their diet right. mentality so much. Right. And then when you look for opportunities, like when they're meticulously weighing and counting and, and struggling or, or talking about how they can't keep sweets in the house, then you can approach those kind of as maybe your, your uh, therapist or coach or, or dietitian is, is working on it with you and approach mm-hmm. the same thing, you know, like, well, what do you think happened there? You can almost help guide them with the curiosity aspect of it. So I think we can implement a lot of those things without overtly just like saying here, you know, this, 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 and expect them to change overnight. <laughs> You're saying it in, in a marriage or relationship, it doesn't <laughs> work to come yeah. on the defense. Wait a minute. But I actually think this advice is even so good for anyone you're having conversation with. Yeah. 100%. Right. And that really is something I'd say, you know, we're getting back to the basics, right? Even if mm-hmm. we just take hunger and fullness, which I know has been twisted, you know, to be used yeah. as a diet, but it is a good starting point that I think anyone can resonate with. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I mean, there might yep. be a, but after that or a dot, 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 but at least to start there, I love mm-hmm. that, you know, low hanging fruit mentality and, and having those conversations happen naturally. And something I, I say to my women that are, I work with is, you know, your relationship best, yep. you know, when and how to communicate things, you know, like, and one of the questions I asked recently of a client was, does it need to be a formal conversation? And she was like, Oh, I don't know why I thought it had to be like this sit down. Yeah. I'm like, does it really, I mean, you know, your relationship and is that how you guys operate? She's like, no. So maybe it doesn't, it, it can be more casual. And what we were looking at is finding common ground together. Mm-hmm. And I said, if he enjoys doing the meal planning, you're still going to eat food. You still want things in the house right. and readily available, especially because you're eating more consistently now, not skipping all of these meals and food and all that. I said, what if that's the thing you do together? 
What if that's yeah. still the thing that brings you together? Yes, it might be coming from two places mentally and emotionally right now, but it is something that you can still enjoy. And that's, I know some couples, this is like not something my husband and I have ever done well. Like they like to work out together. They like to exercise. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you might be shifting your focus from exercise for weight loss to exercise for the overall health benefits. Um, but that's again, another common ground place you can still enjoy together. You can go on those walks or hikes or, or ninja together. I suppose if uh -huh. that's something a couple really wanted, does your yeah. wife do any of that ninja stuff? No, she's <laughs> talked about it, but, uh, but yeah, she's, she's not there yet. Maybe at some point. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, Jeff, this was just the first, I think of many conversations that's going to be helpful, especially when I know a lot of the listeners, um, are married or they have children, right. Mm -hmm. And bringing in this perspective, you know, I can talk about daughters all day long. And I know you could talk about daughters that you yeah. have as well, but bringing in that male perspective, especially if you have sons, you have, you know, men in your life that they might be going through the same kind of struggles. It might be verbalized or expressed differently, but yep. Like acknowledging it, making it normal conversation is so helpful. Jeff, I know people are going to want to hang out with you like I do on Instagram and uh -huh. check out all the things that you have going on. So would you be willing just to share all of the ways that um, people can connect with you or if they want to kind of, you know, send a link to their hubby, like, Hey, I heard this guy on yeah. this podcast. I listened to, could you share that with the listeners? Yeah, I love that. Um, and so yeah, I'll go ahead and list a couple of those things. One again, the uh, intuitive, uh, sorry, men's intuition podcast. That would be actually that'd be a great one to send them to because it's it it's me and and I'm talking from a male perspective, and I'm trying to talk from the from a very practical perspective. So I try and bring in very practical things that that we can do to implement these principles and to explain and understand the principles. And I have a wide variety of of guests on also. So I've had people who are in larger bodies. I've had some women on, I've had you know, a trauma therapists. I even had the former dietitian for the NFL uh, Tennessee Titans football team. She is an intuitive eating counselor and she worked with them for five years. So that was a really cool conversation to have. And so some stuff like that might, might resonate with them mm -hmm. a little bit more than sending them a link to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> some some women's uh, intuition, you know, intuitive eating for women podcast or something like that. And yeah, you know, I I've learned so much from them, but I know some guys it's just may not resonate with that. So, um, and I also have a course that's coming out, and by the time this podcast is released, it should be available. And that's called Equip to Thrive, and you can find that at my website, which is hopedrivesme.com. And that course is uh, an intuitive eating course. And again, it's delivered by a guy. So they may be a little more open to it. And, but along with that too, uh, I'm opening up a men's community. It's equipped to thrive men's community, which is basically a group. Like we have tons of them on Facebook for women or that tend to be mostly women in the intuitive eating space. This one's just for the guys where they can come in talk about guy stuff into in the context of intuitive eating, what they're struggling with, what they need help with. And so that's going to be a part of that, of that course as well. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. And uh, yeah. And then of course, uh, Instagram, I'm at intuitive.eating.men. And one last one, this one, I just opened up this week. So I don't know if you know who Katie Harvey is. Have you I do connected know Katie. with her? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm in one of her groups and I'm one of the only guys that's ever commented in there, but so a question came up and it was about this movement stuff. And some, some women were saying, well, one in particular said, Hey, I love powerlifting and I'm trying to find a group where we can talk about powerlifting and stuff like that, but that's not so diety because all these other groups are so diety. And I thought, Oh, huh, that's interesting. That would be kind of a cool group to have. And then a bunch of other women commented and said, Oh, I would love a group like that. So I started a group like that. That's on Facebook. It's totally free. It's not necessarily my group. It's just a group. So, but I'm monitoring it very closely. And it's for people that are interested in powerlifting and strength sports and other things that are a little bit more intense mm -hmm. kinds of activities that mm -hmm. are still well within the context and, and framework of intuitive eating. If that's what you like, you know, I think a lot of times people are afraid of that or, or, or shy away from it because mm -hmm. it, it came originally from a place of dieting and changing your body, but right. 
but uh, I would definitely uh, encourage you to check that out if that's something you're interested in. And that's just called Power Up with Intuitive Eating. Oh, so I love, um, I love it. And we'll definitely link all of these things in the cool. show notes, because mm-hmm. I know there's going to be a lot of sharing going on. Um, Jeff, thank you again for taking the time just to come and talk and to share with my listeners who I know have a resource now to be able to share with the men in their life. So thanks again for coming on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate you giving me a, a platform to do this and, and share this and, and hopefully it will help help them to uh, open up the the minds of their spouses and partners to, to intuitive eating and maybe help get them on board with it too. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. I really hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. And I hope you grabbed some golden nuggets as I call them with you. And maybe this is an episode that you share or you go find Jeff's podcast and share that one with the men in your life. All right, ladies, until next week. What if you had a peaceful and uncomplicated relationship with food? I mean, what if that meant you no longer stressed when sweets and sugar was in your house? What if you went out to eat without needing to know what's on the menu ahead of time? What if you trusted your body and you knew exactly what it needed and wanted? And what if you ditched diets and diet talk in your home once and for all? If you are ready to stop stressing and obsessing about food and stop the diet cycle in your life, then I think you will love my self-paced intuitive eating course one bite at a time. Each module is packed with information, but not just information for knowledge, information to help you implement the principles of intuitive eating. In fact, here's what one of my clients had to say about this course. Carrie says, I think all the information is broken down into really easy to process segments and there is plenty of time to work on each area. I can't believe how far I have come in such a short space of time. If you've been looking for a self-paced intuitive eating course that also gives you amazing support and encouragement throughout, this is exactly what you've been looking for. Head into the show notes wherever you're listening and click intuitive eating course, or you can head to www.theintuitiveeatingmama.com slash course. You'll find two payment plans so that you can fit it into your budget. And as a thank you for listening on the podcast, use coupon code IE mama for $200 off the pay in full option. I can't wait to welcome you into the intuitive eating course one bite at a time.